Vince Major, um, head of marketing at Ether Wallet, at my Ether Wallet, and today he'll be speaking on the importance of soft, sk soft skills in crypto. Vince, the floor is yours. So I need the names of some projects. Projects you love, projects you work for, just yell a few out for me. Bank and Splat. Bank and Splat? Sure, why not? Okay, uh, give me some more projects. Garlic Coin, okay, what else? Stable Node. Stable Node, okay, perfect. Thank you, thank you for those, I appreciate that. So some of these I know, some of these I don't, but all of these projects have something in common, and that is my mother hates them. <laughs> for, and that's not a bad thing, because she hates my project too. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Vince Major and I am the head of marketing at my Ether Wallet. Now, to be clear, this talk is not going to be about the mom test. Okay, my mother is fairly techno savvy and really only calls me about once a quarter to have a refresher on how to attach a PDF to an email. And that's a lie, it's actually once a month. Uh, but you see, it's not the technology that puts her off from crypto. And it's also not even the concept of the tech that really makes her confused about the company I work for. Instead, it's the way that our industry communicates and storytells that make her roll her eyes at dinner. And you know, I'm sure that this is not something that's unique to me. I'm sure you all have had to explain to your friends and your loved ones this industry, and there's a good chance that <laughs> they gave you a face not dissimilar to this. And that's a bummer, right? Because if you were anything like me, you were amped to be in this industry and just want to tell everyone. So today I want to speak to the heart of that and how I believe that we can overcome these challenges and finally win over this broad. Because I believe that our industry focuses on and values the hard skills over the soft skills to our detriment. So for the duration of this talk, I want you to think of soft skills as those sort of non-technical skills that people have. Think creativity, the gift of gab, mentorship, morale building, Basically, anything that your project managers cannot assign a unit of time to, right? And I want you to also think broadly, not just the skills that people have, but also people that devote themselves entirely to the soft skills. I am one such soft skiller. I have my master's in fine arts, and the only programming I know how to do is slash BRBR, which I think is a return in HTML. I'm still not sure. <laughs> now. There are three key areas in crypto that I believe can be improved by the soft skills. And those are communication, creativity, and connection. If you take away one thing from this talk today, I want it to be that words have immense power. They have the ability to paint pictures, to inspire and create movements that move mountains. So now let's look at some of our crypto words, shall we? Uh, GM, shitcoin, anon, LFG, hodl. Now, I'm old enough to have all of these remind me of a word I used a lot as a kid. And that word was pwn. So now, for those of you that are not older gamers, pwn means next level ownage, or to completely dominate someone in gaming. At least that's how it was explained to me when I was playing EverQuest. It's a word that, in that bubble, in that time, we all used all of the time. However, fast forward to now, gaming has gone completely mainstream, and yet this word has fallen to the wayside. The word itself failed to bring new users into gaming, and so faded from the mainstream lens. Now on the crypto side, I think we are using far too much of our insider lingo to try and bring those on the outside in. Now, I see this so often in marketing. And the problem arises that new users don't know what our crypto words mean. So we're imposing a barrier to entry right out of the gate of our own doing. You know, as an industry, we find ourselves using HODL so much that it literally became a major segment on the John Oliver show. And yet, that mainstream ribbing did very little to bring new users into the space, 
nor did it cement itself in the minds of others. Okay, so to be clear, I don't want to get rid of our slang, right? I mean, <laughs> it's part of the fun of being an insider, right? We want to use these words and tell these jokes. It's fun. But what I do want to point to is that by improving the language that we use to communicate with those outside of crypto, we can only help bring more people into the fold. Because right now, as new users come into crypto, they are being overwhelmed by so many new words and languages. And I can only guess it's like being dropped into Colombia and not speaking a word of Spanish. Bonjour. <laughs> and this is not just related to copywriting and marketing. Let's take a look at the word Ethereum itself. So when it first came into being, the word Ethereum was weird to a lot of people. And, you know, it's still weird to some. It's also super hard to spell, which is why this always makes me giggle like a child. However, after years of constant work by so many incredible people, the word Ethereum has gone mainstream, which is fantastic. I mean, that's probably why most of us are here today. And then they came out with Ethereum 2.0, which is a hard skiller naming convention, but not horrible. I mean, at this point, most people understand software versions and get that the software is evolving or leveling up like a Pokemon, right? And then there was Consensus Layer. Eh. And I can't help but think that had there been more soft skillers in the room to be like, I don't, I don't understand what consensus means in this context, could we explain that a bit easier? That we could have had a better name and better communication. And I, <laughs> I don't want you to think that I'm picking on the amazing people that asked me to speak here today. I tease because I love and I, I want to see things get better. And believe me, it's not just Ethereum that does this. At my Ether Wallet, we recently released our new browser extension wallet called Encrypt, which is spelled with a K. Now, Encrypt services Ethereum Polkadot and is built for the multi-chain future. It's out on all stores, including Safari, which is pretty cool. Now, with Encrypt, I was stone cold new to the Polkadot ecosystem, so I had to do a lot of reading. And as I was doing all this research, there was a word that stuck out to me like a sore thumb in so much of the public-facing information. And that word was as ex existential. Now, when I hear this word or see this word, I think of the fact that I am going to die, my loved ones are going to die, and eventually the last person to remember my name will also die. You know, an existential crisis. At night when the tears come. I mean, we've all been there. Now, what's bananas to me is that in Polkadot, they are constantly referring to an existential deposit, which means the amount that a wallet must have to exist. Now, this to me clearly shows a hard skiller naming convention at work. Now, it might be clear to that hard skiller on the back end, it might be clear to other hard skillers, but to the rest of us, existential deposit makes little to no sense. So, if we apply the power of soft skills to this, something like minimum balance comes to mind, right? Because it's something that we immediately understand. It uses language that is familiar, and of course, doesn't conjure up feelings of existential dread. All of this is to say that by developing more soft skills around communication and more employees around communication will only help bring more people into the fold. Because the clearer we are with our messaging and communication, the easier it is for everyone else to get on our same page. Which brings me to creativity. In crypto, we are creating things out of thin air through code. Like, it is an absolute magic trick for me to watch developers work. However, while some might think naming something 2.0 is creative, it's not. It's iteration. Now, to iterate is to make products great. Iteration is a hard skiller in their finest form. Uh, they continue to improve upon that prior base, getting better each time again and again and again until we reach Immortality, I, I guess. I, I can only think immortality is the goal and is why we pay developers so much more. But the problem is, is when iteration uh, replaces creativity in our space. See, because 
when you iterate, you are only refining the boundaries rather than pushing them. And then when iteration starts to cross-pollinate, you get a lot of noise. Now, I feel like I saw all of this noise in the most recent NFT run. If you search the word board on any NFT marketplace, you are going to get a million results, right? And of course, you're going to get the Board Apes Yacht Club. But then you're going to get the Board Kitty Cats Club and the Board Bad Boys Club. And then eventually, you'll start to get things like the Indifferent Hamster Subaru Society. Now, this is where iteration becomes knockoff, becomes scam and rug pull. All of these lines begin to blur in the minds of not only crypto natives, but those outside of the space as well. And this creates confusion for users, and even worse, can create connections or implied connections where they do not exist. In that case, we can experience one bad actor or project bringing down several because of a loose connection in the mind of the other. For instance, it's very easy for the media or for people outside of crypto to see that one dog-themed crypto project is a scam. Therefore, all dog-themed crypto projects are a scam. Or be unable to tell the difference at all and think they are all one big project rolled in together, much like your parents probably called all video game consoles a Nintendo growing up. At least that's how it was for me. And of course, my Ether wallet is intensely familiar with this iteration problem from others. To this day, we continue to see products called My Blank Wallet, and this does make our brand management difficult. The, oop, did I lose my mic? Nope, there I am. The wallet space in general has also iterated itself into a, whereas so many developers are being forced to create their products with a specific wallet in mind. And the reason is because the current model is winner take all. Now, we're hoping to correct this unintended monopoly through creativity. Our EP 5749 will give users the choice of the wallet they have installed rather than defaulting to the first injected. This restores creativity to the wallet space and will also give developers more freedom when designing a user experience. You don't have to deal to one specific. Am I coming back in and out? Uh, you know, and so I, I encourage you to check looking for feedback. And do I, should I swap? All right, we'll swap. Perfect. Can you hear me now? Hey, there we go. I'm back. So I hope you check that out because I think creativity like this EIP can solve any problem that we have. Because a creative idea or vision can help set your project north star. They can put you on a path that you never thought possible. Brand confusion, that goes out the window the moment you are creative and wildly different from the rest of the noise. It can give new users a fresh and interesting way to understand Web3 and help bring them in. The pitfalls of iteration can also be applied to hiring, which is why I encourage you to not iterate, but create. Foster and build a team of unconventional skill sets. Bring in those creative thinkers who will help drive the storytelling of your brand, or who can think of a new user journey, or even a new product feature out of left field. Because when you are able to spark creativity, and effectively communicate what makes you special to others, that is when we see true innovation and adoption in the space. Which brings me to my favorite of the soft skills we need more of in crypto, connection. Now, humans by our very nature are looking to connect with things. We wanna connect with other humans from person to person, but we also wanna to connect to ideas. So frequently in crypto, we talk about use cases and roadmaps, but what we don't do is craft the story behind our projects. We are letting others, like the media, tell our story for us, frequently to our detriment. Or we have to lean on hard skillers to do the uh, storytelling for us. This results in project descriptions like this. 
an intent-driven, privacy-centric protocol designed to enhance discovery and settlements. Now, I wrote this down. I memorized it, and I just had to read it off this just now because it just feels like a string of words mushed together. And I work in this industry. I can only imagine what someone outside of the space takes away from a description like that. <laughs> okay, yeah, that, that tracks. And this is certainly a place where we can use soft skills to storytell when explaining it to our mothers. Because as it stands right now, that description is simply telling you what that product does. They don't show you the superpowers that it gives you. Think how much easier that description could be to understand if we hypothetically say, okay, we're gonna start with a privacy problem, right? Because everyone understands that big tech is invading us. And from there, we'll probably highlight it connects two people quickly and then exchanges assets without having to wait a long time like with a bank. So in essence, we could go from, story, uh, from jargon to something like our project without invading your privacy through something like a credit check or verifying your identity, find someone that has the asset or ask that you want. It then connects you, exchanges that, and you don't have to wait for five days for it to settle like with a bank. Now, obviously this is a bit wordier and a bit rough because I am not the storyteller for that brand. But you can see how this story gives you something to latch onto and starts to paint a picture in your mind. And it's not just related to projects where we need storytelling. I think it's in moments like this, where we put ourselves in the public eye. It's why everything I am saying here has been scripted. It's been refined, edited, and rehearsed. Nothing here is off the cuff. All of this is a crafted story, except for the mic change that was on the fly. <laughs> because ultimately, I want you all to connect with me, Vince, not only as a brand, but as a human, and also to the ideas that I have. Storytelling also applies off the stage on a peer-to-peer -peer basis. I tend to go to a lot of crypto conferences, and at them I will go to booths, and I will stand there and I will look at the collateral, I will look at the screen, I will look at the banner, I will look at the swag, and I will look the person in the eye, and nothing happens. They don't engage with me, and I ultimately leave. And that's alarming, right? I mean, it happened to me here multiple times. Because if we can't connect with each other inside our crypto bubble, how can we be expected to connect with those outside of it? This is why when we staff our booths, I always try and pair up a soft skiller with a hard skiller. I try to actively deploy my staff in a way that makes tactical sense. This way I have that soft skiller there to start the conversation and communicate, and then they have that hard skiller there to turn to when needed. The reverse holds true as well. If that hard skiller is hitting a wall trying to communicate, they can always tap in that soft skiller for an assist because their skill sets complement each other. I also tell everyone that I don't know is a valid answer because I want to empower everyone to not be afraid of hitting a wall of not knowing the answer. Look, I mean, you all know this. This tech is hard and we are on the bleeding edge here. And I would rather someone leave with a positive personal connection than leave not having engaged with anyone at all. Because this tech will change day over day, hour over hour, like if I'm honest. But that memory of that someone that you chatted with at the Mew booth will hopefully live with you for years. Now, the idea of storytelling weaves through all of my points that I'm making today. The story of increasing the amount of soft skills you employ around communication, creating instead of iterating, and of course, connecting with others. Now, there's a chance you might be sitting there being like, Vince, what, what, what is all this? Are, are you just saying we should hire you? Absolutely. Here is my Twitter. My DMs are open. Best offers only. I'm kidding. Kosala, Brian, please don't fire me. What I am saying is that I want you to look to the soft skills for the challenges your product faces. Question if those challenges have a solve from communication, creativity, or connection. 
I hope that you'll also look to those team members you have that have a spark of a soft skill and help them to grow and foster that. At the same time, with subsequent hires, look to their soft skills instead of just the number of PRs they can submit in a given week. In crypto, we are taking risks all the time on moonshots. And I want you to think of the soft skills as an investment in you and your project. Because sure, you might not see an immediate return on that investment. I mean, hell, you might get that investment wrong. However, on the flip side, if that soft skill turns into a force multiplier that ultimately onboards the next zillion users and my mother into crypto, then it only benefits us all. At the start of this, I said that words have power. And I truly believe that. They just have to be the right words at the right time to make a difference. And they don't have to be a lot. My favorite example of this is when King Philip II of Macedon was conquering Greek city-states in 300 BC. He was just left, right, and center, conquering. He sent a message to Sparta. And this message read, If I invade Laconia, you will be destroyed never to rise again. And the Spartan response was simple. If. Like so many ideas and thoughts and inspiration and words packed into a single two-letter word. In crypto, we always say, oh, you know, we're going to bring more crypto users, more users, more moms into crypto. And we, we put it out a ways, right? We, we're like, oh, it's in the future. This is the internet, and now is 1996, right? And mass adoption is a ways away. I disagree. I think the time to develop the teams that are creative and inventive, who will ultimately onboard the next billion users into crypto quickly, is now but only if we invest in the intangibles of the soft skills. Thank you so much, everyone.